Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar saying we are talking about UFT tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be getting started with understanding that how you can set up the object repository in UFT. As being the very first part of it, we need to understand and recognize that how exactly object repositories manage the properties of objects, which enables us to execute our test script. Now, of course, while recording the script, the objects may get mapped automatically in the repository. Thus, in the previous tutorial, they were not asked to uh, add the objects in the repository. But today we'll understand what happens when you create your own script and how do you manually manage your object repository in terms of adding objects and definitely updating them from time to time. So today we'll be exploring that what exactly is object repository and also understanding how you can add those objects to the repository using object spy. So let's get quickly started and understand the same today. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding object repositories in UFT, which includes what is object repository, the types of object repository, how to add objects to the repository, and a quick introduction to object spy. To get started, the very first thing is to understand what object repository is all about. As the name suggests, object repository is basically a database of all the objects with their respective properties, which is referred by the UFT in order to run a test. Of course, when you write a test script, it does require all the references of the unique properties to identify an object on the screen or an application in order to perform that action on it. Now, of course, there is a place called as object repository where you map everything right here in the repository so that it can be referred by the script. Also, there are various things to be understood with respect to the object repository. But before that, let's understand where we can access the repository for a particular test. You can access the repository under UFT inside the resource menu. And the very first option is object repository which will tell you that what are the number of objects and specific properties associated with that and it will help you to understand which object is using what set of properties and identify the unique one to make use of it. Generally, object repository is just like an interface between the script to the application. The script when written in the action here cannot be applied back to the application as far as you have an interface built which is object repository having all the related properties and their respective outcomes with their values. Now that's where object repository plays a vital role. Now the next question is what are the types of repository do we have in UFT? There are two types of repository. Number one is the local object repository and second is the shared object repository. As the the very common difference we have between the two types of repository is that the local object repository is local and limited to a particular test. That means the objects added in a local repository of a particular test cannot be exported, cannot be used by other particular test. Now it is just limited to that particular test and for each test you create, you have to add the objects manually. But when you make use of shared object repository, it does help you to use it for any number of tests which can be exported and can be saved as an external file .tsr which stands for test shared repository and can be used for any number of tests. All you have to do is take up a new test and associate that repository to the test to make use of the objects. Now here we'll be trying to do some of these activities to understand the same. Right now we are in a new test with, which doesn't have any objects in the repository and there are no scripts as well. Also to add here that objects get added to the repository when you record. You only have to add the objects manually to the repository when you're writing your own script because that's where UFT does not interact with the application. But when you record, UFT is interacting with the application and captures all the objects which you interact with. And that's where the script is also populated. So let's see a quick behavior of this by recording a simple application script to see that how exactly repository captures. So this is my application if you remember from our previous tutorial. Right now just to confirm that do we have any objects in the repository? No, that's completely empty. Let's go ahead and click on record. 
And here we'll be just performing a basic operation to make sure that we don't take a lot of your time to understand a simple concept. So I'm just trying to interact with the login page, entering the username as John and the password as capital HP. Now that's a standard password, so I'm saying that. Press OK. And now if you want, you can just close it at three steps and say stop. Now if you come here, you would see that there are four steps being captured here. And now if I go back to the repository, you would see the objects being listed here, mapped during the recording. Now each object has their respective properties on the right with their right values. So these are the property descriptions and these are the name uh, values of each of these property. Similarly for each object, you will find their name and the value specific to that. Now that's where it makes it uniquely recognizable when you run the script and it does not ask you for anything. But what happens when it comes to uh, preparing your script on your own? Then you can definitely go ahead and add the objects manually. For example, let me again launch the application and uh, let me just log in. So we'll try adding some of the objects on our own. Now here, how to add objects to the repository on our own? You just come to this object repository, click on add objects to local button and click on any of the object which you want to add, something like this. And it will just capture the hierarchy of the object that where exactly does it come into picture and press OK and the object will be added to your repository. Similarly, if you want to add a parent object, click on the title bar and say OK. UFT will prompt as you clicked on a parent object, what is that you want to do? Do you want to include everything? Do you want to add only selected object? Do you want to add or default object types which are enabled by default? Or you want to add everything or just selected ones which you specify here? So you can define the categories and classes of the objects which you want to add and you can just add them. Right now let's go for all object types and say OK. So all the objects on that particular page will be automatically mapped to your repository irrespective of whether they are static or dynamic. And you can find all of them being listed here with their respective properties to uniquely identify them. Now that makes your job easier in fact to write the script something like this. The moment I open the brackets the name comes automatically and if I say dot when WPF edit it gives me an autocomplete suggestions just because it has everything in the memory and now he's asking me what do you want to do so I want to do with this dot set so all the suggestions will come just because you have added everything in the repository so that's about the local object repository the moment I go for a new test As soon as the new test is created here, you will see the repository is cleaned up. As I told you that whenever you create a new test, by default you get a new repository as well. So that's what is the understanding of the local object repository that this cannot be continued forward to a new test. Now in order to do that job repeatedly, we create a local or shared object repository where the shared object repository can be used multiple times with a number of tests. So how to do that? In that case, to create a shared object repository, you first have to add objects to a local object repository and then export it to call it as shared object repository. So click on the add to local object repository. Click on the parent object to add all the objects. Say OK. Then if you want, you can continue to the next page as well and add this because all the objects are important for you. Say OK. Let's select a flight and move to the next page because there are some objects here as well. Click on this, add objects to the local. Again, select the parent object, press OK. Press OK. And last but not the least, don't forget, we didn't add the login page. So let's launch the applications once again. And let's click on the add objects to the local and select the login page as well. All object types. Okay. 
Now you're done adding everything. Now it's time you can start creating your shared object repository. Click on File, Export Local Objects. And while exporting this local objects, you will be asked to save a file of that particular option. For example, let me go to desktop and save it as flight. Now if you see the extension of a shared object repository is .tsr, which stands for Test Shared Repository. Click on Create. Now again, as these are all the local objects, if I take up a new test, it will just erase all the database, including the properties and the objects. But this time, I don't have to repeat my activity in order to create the object repository once again. I can just call the shared object repository. So you can just go to Tools, Associate Repository. Click on Add button here to add a repository. Select the repository which you created in the previous stage and press Open. Tell your Action 1 to use all the objects from the shared repository. Otherwise, by default, it will be referring to local object repository. Now you would see that all the objects are here. And the path says that it is using a shared object repository. Of course, these shared repositories are non-editable. You cannot modify them as they are called from a different source. And it is shared and many people are using it. Of course, there is a way to edit it. You can use the edit option when you go with the resource manager. That is object repository manager, which will allow you to modify a shared object repository that we'll see in upcoming tutorials. So right now we have understood that how a shared repository can be created and can be used. So you can make use of any of the shared repository to avoid your repeated adding of the object types and their properties. One quick thing here to understand that if it comes to identifying certain objects, and adding it using Object Spy. So Object Spy is an option in UFT which helps you identify the objects and their respective properties on an application. So having an application on the screen, you can click on Object Spy which will allow you to find and identify the objects with their respective properties and the values. Click on this button and select any object which you want to map. So if you just hover, you would see that these objects are named accordingly and their respective properties and their values for that. So this is WPF button, OK button. So you, SPY is basically used to identify and learn the objects and their respective properties of an application. You can see all the details about any of these objects on the screen currently present. If you want to see the details at once, press any of the object which you want. You can just select it and then you can scroll through to see what all properties are associated with it. Also, you have a step here, right to add to the repository. So you have a button here, add to object to repository. So if you have selected an object and you want this to be included as a part of your object repository, you can always click on this. Yep, that's confirms, clicks on add, and that's added. To see that, you can just go to the object repository. And right now, the filter criteria shows all object. So drop down and say local objects. So these are, I think, overwritten by the shared repository. That's the reason we don't see them. Let's try adding one more time. Let's click on the, okay, let's try something else. Click on username and add to object repository. Okay, seems like that's already added, so you will not see them. Let's go to local objects. Yeah, so it's overwritten. As one of the object property or object repository is already having that object, it will not allow you to do that. So this is how you can definitely make use of object repositories in UFT and map your objects to the repository before you can start writing your script. Of course, we'll be coming to the repositories now and then to do a lot of other activities. So stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.